Hey up everyone, it's uh, Ian Hex here from lightsweep.co.uk and uh, today I'll be doing a video tutorial on how to blend multiple exposures using the GNU Image Manipulation Program or GIMP and the result is very natural looking we're not going to use any kind of HDR tone mapping software which is going to take two exposures and just blend them together using masks. Uh, so let's get out. Okay, first what we need to do is we've got our two exposures here. Um, this one was taken at Ranadale, which is a small little valley off Buttermere in the Lake District, uh, around sort of uh, end of April, beginning of May time. The whole valley is carpeted in these bluebells um, and it's a really really an amazing sight. So I took a quick composition here and you can see that I've got all the lovely foreground detail, lovely shadow reproduction, lots and lots of mids, but the sky is completely blown out. Okay, so I took another exposure and this time I've got all the sky detail here, but my foreground is totally dark. There's just nothing to work with there at all. Even if I worked with this in Darktable in the original RAW file to bring up the shadows, I could only do so much before I would start introducing noise and corruption. So the solution to blend these two together is to use masks which is what we're going to do now. So here are my two images. I'm going to go to GIMP and we've just got a file open as layers. Nice and easy here. A bit more tricky in Photoshop. So just take these two images here and open. There we go. Let's just zoom in. So uh, let's just move this panel out a bit so I get the rest of it in. There we go. Okay, so here's my layer stack. I've got the bright exposure on the top and the dark exposure on the bottom. I want these the other way around. This is just how I do it, by the way. So I'm just gonna push that down. So now I've got dark exposure, which catches the sky on the top and the bright exposure, which captures the landscape on the bottom. First thing we're going to do is I'm just going to duplicate it like so and then we're going to go colors and desaturate and we're going to desaturate using luminosity. This is very 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 important. This is the shade of grey that we need to be using. Just click OK and then what we do is I just drag this move it to my channels palette just like that don't need to see that and now I can get rid of this and then all we do is we just flip the top layer on right click the top layer add layer mask choose a channel and we only have one channel which we put in earlier and then add boom blended now Let's have a look at this in closer detail. I can see that I've got the sky very nicely blended. Um, if I were to disable this layer mask, you can see that all of this is like super dark, but now it's been blended in a lot better. But let's have a look at some areas of fine detail. Let's zoom into 100%. Here we go. You can see that if I was to show the original bright exposure, we have all of this lovely little local contrast and all of this detail. And without blending, it's kind of gone dull. Okay. And the reason why that happens is because our mask, which is this, is, if you like, too perfect it blends between the two different layers perfectly between each pixel. So 
so all of the um, all of the bright pixels in this br bottom bright exposure here are being darkened and all the dark exposure pixels in this dark exposure here are being brightened and you get a sort of middle compromise that just sort of looks a bit dull now the way that you can correct that is to blur the mask and in doing so you make the the sort of blending mask a bit more unperfect as it were and that will introduce local contrast back into it so let me just do that for you we're just going to blur this mask go to filters blur gaussian blur I'm going to make sure that this is selected and I'm going to use a blur radius of uh, 20 pixels okay there so let me just show you the difference again at 100% so this is before blurring the mask after blurring the mask before after before after so that you can see it's brought back a lot of lovely local contrast but look what it's doing near the edges this is an issue called haloing and it's a often a telltale sign of extreme tone mapping in tone mapping HDR software and we don't want this halo I mean if, if I were to choose a blend that was even bigger so let's say I used 80 pixel Gaussian blur, blur the mask and you can see that there's this sort of light halo into the sky and this dark halo into the landscape um, and that's not good we don't want that at all so what do we do well we use a type of blurring that doesn't blur high edges or sharp edges but does blur areas that are largely the same say like this sort of pathway here um, we're going to use a little filter called gmic which uh, it doesn't come with gimp but you can install it very very easily um, check out the comments underneath this video to find out how to get it so let's show the mask I'm going to use the mask as a new layer here okay and now we go filters gmic or gmic or however you pronounce it then we go to the repair I mean you can see how many filters there are 441 it's an amazing piece of software this you need to have it in your life your life is not complete without it anyway in repair I'm gonna scroll down until we get to smooth bilateral okay essentially what this is is it does what's called a selective Gaussian blur or a surface blur which is what Photoshop calls it and essentially it blurs areas of low frequency but when it finds harsh edges or areas of high frequency it doesn't blur the edge it maintains the edge okay and this is exactly the sort of blurring we need now usually what I do is I look for usually an edge between the landscape and the sky that's quite similar like this distant mountain here in this bit of sky and all I do is I increase the value variance until when this starts to blur into the sky that's when I know it's too much so let me just increase that a bit get in there get in there okay that's too much we need to retain that edge so let's pull it back and that looks good to me so you can see all this gets blurred but the edge is retained okay we just hit okay that'll work its magic 
And there we go, we have a surface blurred mask. So now I'm just going to drag that into my channels palette and save it. Don't need this now. Now, let me just make a copy of this layer for reference and let's hide it. I'm going to delete this mask. So now we're left with our original dark exposure and bright exposure. I'm going to add a layer mask. In fact, what we'll do first, just make it a bit easier, is we're going to call this original mask. We're going to call this one uh, surface blur mask. Okay. So add layer mask, make sure it's a channel, surface blur mask, add. Now that looks a lot better. To see comparison, this is what the image looked like with the original mask applied. See, all this local contrast gone. It's just smudge. So, surface blurred mask, original mask. Surface blurred mask, original mask. You can even see it in the details of the bluebells over here. It just really pops them back out. Have a look up here. And, interestingly, if I just go to 100%, Whereas before, we got a halo, this time, no halo. It's an absolute perfect blend between the land and the sky. But you will notice one thing when you apply this surface blurred mask here. You just get this little hint of jagged edge along here. It's a bit pixely. Now that's easy to correct. You just select the mask. Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we're going to choose a small pixel value, say 2. And that's possibly a smidge too much. We'll use 1 then. There we go. So, if you have a look along this edge here, we'll zoom in a bit before and see how jagged and sharp that edge is after, before, after. So that just makes that edge look a lot more natural. So, let's just run through what we had. Let me just uh, disable this layer mask. So, bright exposure, dark exposure, blended, but with an original mask and lots of contrast. And then, ooh, there we go, blended but with some local contrast restored using a surface blurred mask. Now it's looking pretty good. The sky's lovely and exposed. The ground is much better than what it was before. But let's have a look at the original foreground exposure. This is really what I want to be seeing. This was perfectly exposed. And this has sort of darkened a little bit. And there's a bit of local contrast, but just not as much as if we used the original exposure. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm essentially just going to cut away part of the mask that I don't want to use. So I'm just gonna select my lasso tool if you will here and then I'm going to select the add to current selection and basically I want to select all of the foreground because all of this is lovely and I want to keep all of that so let's just draw a rough selection near the edge like so you don't have to be precise, you don't have to be a whiz kid with the mouse, just draw your selection there. Now we have our selection, we're just going to go select feather and we're just going to blur the selection. Usually I like to use maths because I'm a bit of a geek. 
So we take the width of the image, which is 2048 pixels wide, and I'm going to blur and sort of divide that by six. 341 pixel blur. So now we have a blurred selection. And to reveal this brighter, properly local contrast exposure here, we need to fill our selection with black. Okay? So what we do is we get the paint bucket tool, make sure that black is on top here, make sure this is foreground fill color, and just fill it. No, we don't. We just go back a step and you just hold control and comma, like so. That's how we do it. Now we can deselect. Let's have a look at our layer mask. This is how our final blending layer mask looks. So you can see that all of this is completely black. So what that means is the mask is showing this brighter layer underneath. And then we have this little transition zone which we've created previously using a surface blurred mask. So that gives us a perfect transition zone and a really nice crisp edge along there as well so that there's no halloing. And the result is a perfectly blended image. It's very natural. It's how you see it with your eyes. If I were to show the bright exposure underneath, you can see how this blends. Okay. And if I take off the layer mask, it's a, just a brilliant exposure. Okay. Now I'm just going to make a visible copy of that and step by step we start with our bright exposure, all of foreground, lovely detail, all of the shadows in the midtones. Dark exposure with about the same board. So have lovely sky exposure, but all this is too dark. After the initial mask blending, so it's blended together, this is looking dull and there's no local contrast, that's gone. And then after applying a surface blur mask and then removing from the mask all of this here, we get So now we're using pretty much all of this foreground exposure, but the transition zone between the sky and the landscape has been surface blurred to, to retain the edge without causing halos, but keeping local contrast. So the final mask looks like that. Dead easy. So. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, um, I will be doing an awful lot more, so make sure to like this video just below the uh, above the comment section, um, subscribe if you want to see more, and uh, if you've got any questions, by all means just ask away. Uh, ta very much, I'll see you in the next one, ta -ra.